Hi, my name is Earl and welcome to my garage. Um, I've never done anything like this before. I'm doing this mostly kind of for fun um, and a little bit of accountability. Um, what I am doing is I'm going to be recreating the 18th century powder horn. Um, there is a lot of this book I will ignore because I'm not trying to make a fancy horn. I am trying to make something that is functional. Um, if you want to see basically what I'm going to base it off of, look up um, Ethan from I Love Muzzle Loading. He did it on the National Muzzle Loading Rifle, uh, Muzzle Loading Rifle Association's page for a simple powder horn. That being said, there are some techniques in this book that will be very helpful. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of what I do and what my setup is here in my garage because I am poor. All right, so to begin, I have my bench vise. And there's a lot of things you can use, um, but what's going to help first, you're going to need a piece of wood, like a big, thick dowel. Um, this is a shovel handle I broke off of the knee tool, which seems to work. Um, a lot of times you'd want to use like a nice thick piece of leather. I don't have any leather just laying around, but what I do have is this nice um, bench mat material, which I kind of layer on top of cardboard. And for me, this works. Um, so here is our specimen. I went to my local butcher and I asked him, said, hey, can you contact your slaughterhouse and can you get me some horn? He said, no problem. So thank you, Apple Valley Butcher, for this fabulous horn. Um, and then basically from there, you're going to need various files. I would like to thank my father-in-law, Bob Becker, for these fabulous files that he gave to me. He was cleaning out his garage. He didn't have a large need for them. I sat on them for about two years until I finally got a file card and cleaned them up. And by golly, they are some uh, they're Nicholson files in here. They're really good quality files. Um, I plan to put these to use later working on um, um, a couple muzzle loaders coming up. So, so firstly, what we're going to look at is our horn. This is our horn. It's dirty. It's gross. They actually stink a lot. No one tells you that. Now, you can go online and you can buy refined, uh, polished horns that'll be this size or larger. This is probably about a good 12 to 14 inches long along the curve. Um, and you can buy really nice horns. Um, however, I wanted to take it from a rough horn, so I'm really going to start this here. And the, the goal today is going to be take it from all this gunk and nastiness and hair and just clean it up. And that's what we're gonna do. So I think to start, I'm gonna use one of my rasps. I'm gonna use this wood rasp. It's got a nice, it's a bastard file profile. And it really just eats through this gunk. And one of the things that, if you don't use files a lot, you don't really, you can't really feel it. You'll like find like the right angle, cause I don't go, Nine, completely 90 to the horn, I kind of follow a diagonal where the teeth really bite and do a lot of work. And you just kind of watch the horn and just watch it as the material comes off. You notice I'm using this to push against here. This post is what's helped, helped guide me and not let this move. I could try and chalk this up in a vise, but then I would bend it, crack it, warp it. Um, you really just got to work with the horn. You know, it's a very organic grown piece of material, so it does not follow any right angles. It's, it's nature, baby. So you just follow around and around and just work the gunk off and it stinks. But you can already see the difference how it's going from that brown yellow to that white just in those few couple strokes Now, I think here, this is where I think I actually grew 
bit inside the cow's head. So this, I don't think I'm going to even try to keep. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hacksaw this off, but we're going to still work on all this and then down around finally do the tip. So one of the things I'm also going to use is I'm going to actually stick the horn on the wood and use it to work around and remove that and get all that gunk off. Now I left out a good amount of work I did, but you can see the difference in this horn now of how much of that stuff I just got off of there. And there's still some here, a little bit. Especially near the tip. That's okay. The tip I find to actually be usually not the worst part. Um, that being that being said, this is my second one I ever made, so you know, whatever experience of one. So um, you know, folks, if you ever want to give it a shot, go for it. You don't need a bunch of fancy tools. You don't need a fancy workshop. You got some hand tools, some determination, and. Uh, some desire you can do it too so now that i got most of this hogged out with rasp i really don't need it much anymore so i'm probably just gonna take my rasp real quick do myself a favor for future me so future me doesn't have this problem i'll take my file card and i'll clean my rasp up if you've never seen a file card all it is it looks like one of those fine tooth dog brushes on crack and that helps get all the junk out of your files. So next we're going to move to, I'm just going to use this single cut mill file. Um, is this Nicholson? No, this is a Delta. But I've used this on the last uh, horn, and this thing was fantastic. I love it. Again, shout out to uh, <laughs> Father Ma Bob, the homie hookup. Now, we don't have to go and get this thing polished all the way up um, before we start doing a lot of major work, but I just want to knock down some of these high spots and stuff. I'm also going to use a little bit of this really fine cut, or this really fine. This is, this is a double cut bastard file, and this also seems to do a really fabulous job. It knocks down those high spots and kind of smooths out your surface really well. Um, definitely a bit more for fine work, but it does the job. So, again, I'm no master. I just enjoy doing this stuff. Um, I really started falling down the muzzle loading rabbit hole. This past year, two years, um, I inherited a, a Hawken. Um, it's a Thompson Center. It's nothing special. You know, they made a million of those things in the, I don't know. I think they started making like in the 70s or something. So I got it from my grandpa. And um, I take it now. I live in Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is like one of two states that actually has a traditional muzzleloader season, meaning you can only hunt with uh, a flintlock. So it was really a cool opportunity to be living here, you know, the, the birthplace of the American long rifle, and to start really getting into this more. I've had my exposure through my family, and uh, my family's big into shooting and hunting, but this has just been something, something else. So now I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off because I'm tired of looking at it, and I want to show you something. It, it is very soft. This is not useful to me. So we're going to trim it back probably, I don't know, an inch or so from where this, this line ends that goes around. We'll brace it up against our post here. And I'm just going to rest the blade of the hacksaw against there. And we'll just start making a cut.
Easier than harder than it looks, folks. Ooh, and we cut in a really nice diagonal in there too. Nice. Really, really doing good there. But I think that will still make a very lovely powder horn. And God, does it stink. So, little trick. You can take the tail of your file. It's a really good corner. And you can scrape the inside where you got this cut from your hacksaw. You can do some a lot of things. It doesn't just have to be horns. So what I'm going to do later is I'm actually going to I'm going to put a piece of sandpaper here on this little anvil and I'm going to use that as a flat spot to sand my horn. And that should help a lot in forming this thing. So there we go. That is looking not too bad. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick. And the fun thing is, is like, there's not necessarily a, a wrong way to do this. Not necessarily the right way to do this. It's kind of like as long as you get some of the steps and some of the sort of the right order, you'll be all right. So I just take this, and I'm just going to run it back and forth on the anvil. And it's going to make a sh ton of noise. So now you can see it's a nice flat. You don't have to do that. It's really more for aesthetic for me, how I want this to look like. So it's kind of the reason I'm doing it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think tonight what we're going to end up doing, we're going to go ahead and figure out where our, where our, horn, or our horn cavity ends, where we're going to trim the tip and probably drill the hole for our spout and then i think from there we'll call it a day we won't go too much further than that so what we're going to do is we're going to take any piece of wire we got laying around shove it in the horn what you want to measure is the long curve here so take that we held our fingers where the tip was so it looks like it's all it starts all the way back here so i'm going to take my marker here. I'm going to mark that as the end of my horn cavity right there. So I can trim as much as I want off of this, but honestly, I think I'm going to trim. Oh, I'm going to, I think I'll trim like I won't trim much. I'm going to trim enough that I can get a quarter inch drill bit in there um, because I might try to get a little teeny bit fancy with this, but not much. I'll just do a real simple spout on this. It'll be good enough. It'll, it'll work for my little flint lock. If I like this, who knows, maybe I'll make some for friends. I think they make good wall hanging gifts if you really just want to do this for kicks and giggles. And you didn't really want to do this for Ugh. so I think I'm gonna trim about I don't know. I think about that much. I'm gonna take my time a little bit better this time. Again, trying to like a dummy, not cut this straight down. There we go. I'm gonna clean this up on my sandpaper a little bit.
I need to file for this bad boy. And this part stinks too. It does get a little hot, so be careful. That's my pilot hole. So I'm going to do about a quarter inch on my cheapy, cheapy Hobo Freight drill index. So that will get the job done. There she is. I think I got this one a little bit more dead center than my last one. Ooh. I also like these light to have a look at certain things. At least in my opinion, it helps a little bit. So. Okay, so we're mostly the way there. So we have a nice horn, we got a nice hole for our spout, we got a nice end for our plug. I think we'll call it a day, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. This has been Earl McGird's Garage. Thank you. Bye.